So next talk, kind of similar thing. When actions speak louder than clicks, a combined model of purchase probability and long-term customer satisfaction presented by Hong Connection from Microsoft. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's a joint work with uh, Gal and Oren. Uh, Gal was with uh, Microsoft at the time. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, bias remorse. This is something that I guess all of us are familiar with. Um, you know, when you buy something and then after you purchase it, you regret doing that. So we collected two stories from, from Reddit. Um, this one is about an exercise machine. Turns out you actually have to make an effort in order to lose weight. She's disappointed. This one, uh, I bought some geese. When I was a kid, they immediately attacked my dad and flew away. So these are examples of bias and remorse. And what we would want to do is to minimize that, um, minimize bias and remorse, or, or actually maximize um, the satisfaction, user satisfaction after purchasing an item. And this is something that is a little bit different than what we usually do in recommender systems. We're mostly concerned about how to maximize clicks or to maximize purchases in our case. So in this work, we try to actually do both. We still want to maximize purchases, but we also want to learn the user satisfaction after the purchase and try to maximize that as well. And the approach is a, is a multi-objective Bayesian uh, model that learns one class probabilities over the one class purchase probabilities and the satisfaction score for every user in IT. Um, and we basically designed this for uh, games on Windows Store, this Windows 10 Store, uh, the App Store, and also for the Xbox Marketplace. Um, so at this point, you're probably asking, how do we know if users are satisfied? And the answer is. The short answer is we don't know for sure, um, but we can have some sort of an implicit satisfaction score. And I'm not going to tell you the exact formula, but I can give you some clues about how something like this could be computed, at least at the games domain. And the model itself was very general, so you could imply any type of satisfaction score in it, either explicit satisfaction score if you have it, or an implicit one. Um, so clearly, um, if a game is enjoyable by the user, we assume that uh, she would come and play it more frequently. The other thing is, we assume that she would spend more time playing that game. So we can measure how many, you know, how frequently the game is being played and how the length of each playing session. Um, some people are heavy gamers and they spend a lot of time in front of their Xboxes. And some, like myself, are very busy. Uh, so these numbers have to be somehow averaged or, or normalized and to see how they deviate from the user's average. And also another thing to consider is that some items are specifically designed to be played for a longer period of time. So you have to basically to take that into account as well. And what you want at this point, you want to have some sort of a likelihood it turns both um, a binary, uh, a binary signal about the probability of purchasing something, and a satisfaction score. And this is n is the user and n is the item, and it should be um, we wanted it to be proportional to this factorized um, term that basically has uh, some something that models the. the probability to purchase the item and another thing that would model the satisfaction score. And we also wanted the ability to control that. So if business would tell us we should maximize purchases, we would have this gamma scalar and put it to one and we would basically focus on the purchase like uh, most of the recommended systems are doing. But if somebody would ask us to focus on the satisfaction score, we could basically scale gamma to zero and focus on this component. And to be more specific, the item that we arrived with, so we have this probability for the satisfaction score and the binary uh, purchase probability, the binary uh, rating. And the other parameters, we have a user vector and an item vector, user bias and item bias. And we introduced two new parameters, kappa and psi, which I'll explain in a second. 
And it's quite simple. We have a Bernoulli distribution over the probability to purchase an item, and a Gaussian normal distribution over the probability for the satisfaction score. And both of them are taking a similar um, similar term, which is the inner product between the user vector and the item vector, plus devices. The Bernoulli distribution is scaled by gamma. Gamma appears in the variance for the normal distribution here. So basically what you have is when gamma is equal to 1, you're left with the Bernoulli distribution uh, into the sigmoid like that. And, and for the normal distribution, you have infinite variance, so you can't ignore this term. And when gamma is equal to 0, the Bernoulli distribution is constant, and you ignore uh, the Bernoulli distribution, and you only care about the um, satisfaction score. And any value between 0 and 1 will give you a balance between these two. Um, the last thing I want to mention, which is very important when you do those sort of things, is that the, the dynamic operation range for the sigmoid um, could be very different than what you would want with the dynamic operation range for the normal distribution for scores. So this is why we're basically scaling it with kappa and also allows for shifting it with psi. So we are using the same argument, assuming that the two tasks are correlated. And there's also a hidden assumption here that people know what they're doing and they do tend to buy the games that they will be happy with afterwards. Not necessarily each and every purchase, but in general, they know what they're doing. Uh, but sorry, but you, know, you do need this uh, scaling in, all, in order to make this work. Because to operate the probabilities, to operate the scores, you need different dynamic ranges. Um, so that's about the math. The optimization basically follows variational base uh, that you can see the update steps in the paper. The idea is basically to write down the posterior distribution of the parameters and then try to uh, basically minimize a cobalt uh, labor divergence between the true posterior and some approximation of the posterior. Um, and Evaluation we've done with uh, two data sets that are proprietary from Xbox games and Windows games, and two public ones, last of them, and MovieLens. We don't have, of course, satisfaction scores for these two. So for uh, last of them, we just counted the number of uh, times that people came back and listened to the same artist, and MovieLens, we just used the actual ratings. And um, as baselines, we used uh, BPR and uh, the implicit feedback model by Huko, Ren, and Zelensky, and also uh, a regression model with ALS. Um, so there's more evaluation in the paper. I want to just focus, on, focus on, on two types of evaluations. One is this one. Um, basically, we have two tasks. One is to learn the satisfaction score, and we can quantify how well we're doing in terms of the root mean square error. And the other one is predicting the purchase probability. So for this, we're using MPR. And in our case, higher is better. Um, so you want to be at one. So again, you would want to be at the upper leftmost corner. And what you get here is that the model that we've shown has a good trade-off and seems to be closer to the upper left corner, even though, and we have the numeric numbers in the paper, we're not always winning on each of each particular task separately. So, in fact, in this case, we're not using on NPR. Um, and, in fact, in all of the cases, just using simple regression would be better to only learn the satisfaction scores. But, um, it's the red dot, but uh, it would be, you know, to get a good balance between learning these two tasks, um, our model is actually performing better than the baselines. Um, the last slide I want to show in terms of uh, uh, results is this one. This is for the particular case of Xbox games. And what we have here is the, the regular model that we've trained um, for Xbox games with the binary signal and the uh, satisfaction scores. And we also have the same model trained only on the purchase probability, only the binary purchase probabilities. And this is the PR according to item popularity. And what you see is that by introducing the satisfaction scores, at least in this particular case, we were able to get a better prediction with respect to the next purchase of the item. So 
Um, and I cannot say this is true for every domain, but at least here we know that the tasks are correlated. So the choice to use the same parameters is justified. And in other words, users do know what they, our users do know what they're doing. They do tend to buy the uh, items that are actually going to make them happy afterwards. Uh, so to conclude, uh, uh, we basically introduce a multi-objective basic model that turns both a person probability and satisfaction score. Uh, we learn the parameters with rational base. And in some cases, we've shown that uh, actually introducing the satisfaction scores can actually improve your probability to predict the next purchase. Thank you. President here. First is, did you do any A-B testing on this? Uh, we've done A-B testing on not exactly this, something similar. Um, and uh, yeah, it's important to, let's just say this, you don't want to treat every item that the user bought <coughs> equally, right? You, you need to kind of learn something about what he is satisfied with or not. So there, there's a variant of this that we've tested and it works pretty well. Um, another question is of operational bias. Uh, you explicitly uh, computed the updates for each factorizing distribution, or do you use um, any black box variation inference how it's implemented under the hood? Yeah, uh, we, we write down the, in the paper we have the math for the update steps for each of the parameters, mm -hmm. and then there's a set of code which kind of looks like alternating the squares, squares just with more complex update steps. So you can learn all the, all the uh, user parameters in parallel, you can learn all the item parameters in parallel, and uh, kappa and psi you learn at the end of this iteration, and you basically iterate over the parameters. And we, yeah, we, we implement this ourselves. Oh, why not any black box ratio inference? Is it just variance of gradient? Uh, I'm not familiar with a lot of um, libraries for rational base. Uh, maybe a third of that. Uh, it's more efficient when you do it yourself. And personally, I think it's more fun. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thanks. It's very nice work. Uh, uh, so basically, for, I'm concerned about experiments on movie lens. Uh, so movie lens, uh, uh, the ratio of Movies getting rated, uh, which get rated, are very is very less. So if the user didn't watch the movie and didn't rate the movie, uh, so would you say that the user wasn't satisfied with it because he didn't rate it? Oh, so you are asking about explicit ratings? Yes. Yeah, so in this in this work, the the satisfaction score is general. We we don't. Um, take into we, we basically don't discuss what specific you know satisfaction score you are using here. You could use explicit ratings. You could use implicit satisfaction score. A lot of people know when their users are happy or, or they have some sort of notion about what they want users to be doing in their system. So you can compute something heuristically. Um, if you have explicit scores as well as implicit scores. You can do either some sort, of a, some sort of a combined score, or you can basically have another term of like you that would be easy to add another one. Yeah. Oh, what we've done on move? Oh, yeah, that was just the ratings. Just the ratings. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the talk. So I have a question about the uh, uh, label sparse, sparseness. So uh, the satisfaction label is the scale uh, very uh, significantly smaller than, the, for example, engagement label or a purchase label. For example, once only you have the purchase, you can um, some of them like not satisfied and some of them 
like satisfied, and then does the model uh, make a recommendation more towards the uh, top popular popular items? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. So in terms of sparsity, it's about the same. Uh, most of the games that are purchased on Xbox, people actually play with. Not necessarily the same amount of time, but it's it's not common that people buy a bunch of games and then just uh, put them on the shelf. Um, so it is, it is a smaller number of satisfaction scores than, than total purchases, but it's not a major difference there that we need to consider. In terms of the other, other part of the question, if, if this model tends to basically prefer the popular stuff, then I would say that a lot of recommended systems do tend to prefer the popular stuff. And, this one has this issue as well um, that that needs to be addressed in some some way or another. Um, it's just not part of this work here. Um, but yeah, the, the, this model, like most of and not most, but uh, say many, many, many recommended system models, have a tendency to recommend. Or if you try to predict the user next purchase, most people are buying the popular stuff by definition. The satisfaction score is actually having an extra bit of personalization in that sense. Okay, let's thank our speaker.